Story 1 I've experienced many odd and unexplainable events in my life, but this event has been on my mind for a few years now, and I finally decided to tell it, and pray I'm not the only one who's experienced something like this. So let's start from the beginning. I graduated from high school in 2019 and was promoted to supervisor for a kitchen in a nursing home down the street. Since I oversaw dinner, I didn't start work until about 3.30 p.m. and would get home around 10 p.m. So for the first half of the day, I would be completely home alone. And I enjoyed that time. Solitude was always nice, especially when you're an introvert as I am. Normally, I would sleep in until about noon, but this time I decided to relax on the couch in our main living room and watch kitchen nightmares. I remembered nodding off and falling into a light sleep, so any small noise would wake me up. The first few times I cracked my eyes open, it would be just from the cats jumping on me. So when I felt a cushion by my feet dip a bit, I figured it was my cat Peach. After a moment, I opened my eyes and realized my younger sister was sitting at the end of the couch, her back to me. I was half asleep, so I didn't really think much of it. I figured she'd probably stayed home from school sick. So I asked her if she could move her head so I could see the TV, but she ignored me. Still facing the TV screen, annoyed, I asked her why she was home. Once again, she remained silent, coming to the conclusion that she was just being rude. Again, I closed my eyes and fell back asleep. After about another hour, I got up and started to get ready for work and noticed my sister wasn't in the room or in the house. Concerned, I called her. After trying to call her a few times and getting nothing, I called my mother. She picked up and I asked her if sis told her where she was going. My mother, confused, asked me what I was talking about. She dropped sis off at school before going to work. My sister had been at school this whole time. In shock, I hung up and kept this to myself, convinced I was losing my mind, that it was all in my head. But I remember that moment so vividly. What my sister was wearing, how she was sitting, how I felt a shift in the couch when she sat down. This wasn't a dream. This was real. It had to be. There was something in my house with me that morning. And it wasn't my sister. Story 2 It was a pretty uneventful day. We had just finished settling in our new home and out of the dreadful condo units we occupied while this house was under construction. Everyone else had plans, while I agreed to stay behind with my grandma to finish with the decoration details around the house. When grandma's at home, you can expect a clean, fresh smelling home and she will turn off all unnecessary lights around the house to conserve electricity. It was half past 11 in the morning when she called me down to eat. I was upstairs folding my clothes from our luggage. I went down and she was just taking the food out of the oven and told me, oh good, I was just about to call you. It was weird because I could have sworn I heard her just call me when I was upstairs. I dismissed it thinking she just forgot. We were eating and talking about plans for the rest of the day. To give you a visual, our dining table was rectangular with the less wide side facing the narrow staircase that would lead to the bedrooms. That was when we heard it. A few thuds, what we guessed was the upstairs landing. Then, the sound progressed to what sounded like footsteps that were going down the stairs and became louder as it stepped down the stairs. 
Then, after the last step on the stairs, it stopped. We both looked at each other with wide eyes, and we were both panting, and it was apparent that my grandma was scared too. She took a huge breath, and with trembling fingers, she flipped the switch to turn on all the downstairs lights and turned the TV on for some background noise. It was 11 in the morning on a newly constructed house. We were so scared that we just ate in silence and just sat in the living room for what seemed like an eternity until every one of our family came home. They asked us about our day and somehow we both knew in silent agreement that we should keep to ourselves what happened earlier. Later that night, around 9, everyone was in bed and as always I shared a room with my grandma and my aunt who was visiting us was in the same room as well. Everything was quiet, and we had a lamp on. My eyes were closed, but I felt a shift in the mattress and the lamp went out. I assumed it was my grandma that decided to conserve electricity again. I shrugged it off and tried to sleep. I heard one of our family members go down the stairs and was going on about the kitchen and I guess eating because we could hear the chatter of spoon and forks against the plates and the faucet turning on as well. Mind you, we don't have neighbors yet, as the subdivision was still in early development. I fell fast asleep after that. In the morning, there was a slight commotion when I got to breakfast. Everyone was teasing my aunt, the one that slept next to me, saying that she got hungry again and went downstairs in the night rummaging for leftovers. My grandma was unaware of this as she brought my cousin Anna to school earlier this morning and hasn't been home yet. Everyone saw me walking down the stairs and when I caught up to their conversation, I blankly told them no. Aunt Andy was beside me in bed the whole night. I thought it was one of you guys that went down. I was still just half asleep when I heard someone eating too. Everyone got silent as I finished my sentence and from there, we all knew that it was never one of us whose noise we heard that night. Ever since that event, we have had our own share of stories that made the chills run down our spines. Story 3 About a decade back, I used to work at a brewery. It was set in a pretty big and old building from the early 1900s. I worked there for a couple of years, and most of the time, it was pretty chill, but backbreaking at times. On my time working there, I had two experiences that I can only describe as supernatural. For the first one, it was a particularly late night, and I was tasked with closing up the hangar Closing it up was making sure there wasn't anything obstructing where the trucks would park, stacking up any loose crates, turning the lights off, and locking it all up. I was about done, so I turned the lights off, and as I'm making my way to the door, a beer bottle comes rolling towards me from the dark between the tall stacks of crates. It wasn't forceful or anything. It looked like someone gently placed it on the floor and rolled it towards me. I didn't think too much of it, so I picked up the bottle and placed it inside an empty crate. I turned around and started walking. Another bottle comes rolling from the same place. Then another one. Tired and thinking it was a co-worker trying to mess with me, I shouted, Hey, alright, you got me. Come on, I gotta close it up. I expected to hear laughter or something, but instead, it was dead silent. I waited for a couple of minutes, turned on my flashlight, and started looking around the stacks of crates for what I thought it would be, a giggling coworker. After searching each corner and turn, I gave up. I was a little weirded out at this point, but I just picked up the two bottles from the ground and placed them in the same crate as the first one. I turned off my flashlight and shouted at the darkness, all right, I'm locking up. See you tomorrow. Just as I finished saying that, a crate full of bottles fell from one of the stacks and landed two feet from me. Glass shards and beer exploding everywhere. 
The next day, I told my boss about it and he said it was probably a rat. The thing is, those crates, when full, probably weighed 20 pounds. How could a rat push it? Talking to co-workers, they told me that they've also experienced weird stuff during closing hours. My second experience happened again when I was closing the place. This time, I was closing the pub. When closing the pub, the last thing you usually do is restock the walk-in freezer. The freezer is probably just as old as the building itself, and it sits underground, right beneath the bar. I was down there filling that enormous thing with kegs and crates. Being a very old freezer, from a time when safety wasn't a big concern, the thing doesn't open from the inside. No handle, nothing. Just a flat, plain steel door. So I did what I always did when I had to go inside that thing. I put a keg securing the door open. I was halfway through the task when I hear the door slamming shut. I rush towards the door, but it's locked shut. I started pounding on it, but the only other person there was my boss in the office, two floors above me, probably with his door closed. I tried my phone, but since I'm locked underground inside a steel and lead box, I had no service. I was wearing only jeans and a t-shirt, so things were getting chilly pretty quickly. My face was going numb and my hands were getting stiff. I made a blanket out of cardboard, but it was doing very little to keep the cold at bay. The only reason I didn't freeze to death was because I had a date with a regular and she went there looking for me. She asked my boss where I was, and when he couldn't find me, he went to the basement and found me inside the freezer. I was there for about 45 minutes when he found me, and I was starting to consider writing a letter to my parents and drinking myself to sleep. My boss installed a chain to keep the door open after that, but I refused to ever walk into that death trap again. Weirdest part, the keg I had holding the door open was on the other side of the room when I got out. It was a full steel keg, not something that just slides away, let alone quietly.